So hello, I'm Jay Headley. I'm here with Helen Pope, uh, one of our students from our Integral Professional Coaching Pathway, and Helen's done uh, NLP courses, uh, master practitioner with us as well, Helen. Yeah, yes. She's been with us for a while. Uh, Helen and I are going to go through a coaching session. I'll let Helen introduce the topic uh, in a moment. Um, this is an intake session, so um, it's, a, it's a session that looks at uh, what it is that Helen wants to engage in in coaching together. And so um, we won't necessarily address, this is identifying the core coaching topic for us to get in and actually coach to. So it's what we call the intake process. So, hey, Helen, how are you going? Hey, not too bad, thanks. So what is it that you think would be valuable for us to coach to in terms of the topic today, Helen? Um, I want to look at the what's behind me really not putting myself out there on social media for my business and not putting the content out that um, has been recommended that I put out and, yeah, what what's behind me not actually um, putting myself out there from a marketing perspective, probably from a business element. Okay, so there's a lot in that. So yeah. let's, let's just unpack some of those statements. So, so what is out there, Helen? When you say out there, what are you referencing? Um, basically posting content that's relevant to engage people that may become curious about my business or, or curious about booking into a session or, or something with me, or something similar. But I'm still not clear on what out there is. Where's out there? Out there is social uh, social media world. So posting, say, on Facebook, Instagram, doing LinkedIn posts. Even um, I have a blog to write up that's supposed to be good for my SEO. So completing writing blogs and um, posting those onto a website and getting the, the element of, of marketing out on the World Wide Web. Um, okay. Yeah. And then you said putting yourself out there so when you say put yourself out there what are you referencing helen how do you how do you um uh, uh what's the self that you're constructing that you that you're talking about putting out there um the self that's constructing i suppose is my um creating conversations uh videos um for myself talking about topics um, that are relevant to my business. So I, I suppose, although it's the same person, it would be in inverted commas, my business persona um, element. And, and rather than necessarily just resharing a post or resharing actually creating um, the content myself, so say creating a reel where I'm having a conversation with them or having a topic or... Um, writing about something, um, which I do do a little bit, but it, it, it's probably more the consistency element as well um, of putting things out there more consistently that would be considered potentially of value to others. Okay. But I'm interested in the self that you're talking about that you're putting out there. So what I'm hearing is the self that you're talking about is in the context of your professional self, your business self. Yes. Think, yes. And, and, how, and how that really shows up and appears in order to attract my ideal client. Okay, but I also sense that that self that you're referencing is more than that. It's more than what you attract. My, my sense is that when you talk about putting yourself out there, you're talking about how you're seen and perceived professionally, how you're seen and perceived by others. Yes, yes, correct, yes. Okay. So that's so, how, how I'm perceived and then how that, how that is then potentially fed back to me in, yeah, so that I, yeah, and that's, that's, um, yeah, con not con it concern, let's say the word concern. It concerns you? Um, it's, it concerns in the sense that it's not so much that I, I want everybody to like me. It's more about my own internal self. Um, like I do want everyone to like me, but <laughs> on, on that token, it's it's more about my impact and self-talk um, in the face of, of others' feedback or even me looking at things again and going, oh, that's not right, that's not, 
I haven't, you know, I should have done this or I should have done that. Okay. Is that a habit for you, Helen? Are you critical of yourself in that way, not just in this context, but in other contexts as well, or is it just in this context? Um, yes, it has been. It definitely, it, I, I've done a bit, lot of work around it, but it definitely comes up in, in areas, in, in, and it's more that the voice that come it just comes up or, you know, something might happen and it just automatically is like, oh, you shouldn't have done that or you're an idiot or that was a stupid thing to do. And it was just that thought. And and it predominantly now doesn't impact me um, when it surfaces um, because I'm, I'm aware of it, that it's it's not me. Um, but I can see how that still, it, that's the impact I'm, I'm worried about because um, it, it, of the of where I've been in the sense of the spiral downwards before um, into depression and um, those areas and, and how intense that voice can get at times. And I okay. think there's the rem it's the remnants of that still playing out. Okay, so a couple of things. So you speak about the voice as as if it's its own presence, as if, as if you don't have any power over it, that yeah. voice and the presence of that voice. Um, being your superego, and you gave a cause-effect statement. And the cause-effect statement was that you're an idiot because people won't like you because of the mistake you made. There's the cause-effect that, mm -hmm. that, that came But I didn't, from. yeah, I didn't do it right or good enough or, yeah, and something like that. People won't like you. Yeah. What does it mean to you not to be liked by people, Helen? Um, it's not as big as an impact, but it for me. <sighs> so slow down. What's the movie you're playing in your head now? That one. <laughs> um, it's the past. You've, you've, right? you've constructed one, and you've remembered. Well, tips, yeah, that one. What's that? Yeah. One? <laughs> um, it's it's me previously being really self conscious about about who I was and being seen. Um, yeah, and just and just how I'm perceived more than anything because it's, a slow down. it's, it's the self, it's again, it, it comes back to that self I, um, abuse of, of the self-critic, um, judging myself um, in the face of how others might might perceive me. But it's more it's more of an attempt to move away from that. Right. So it's reverse yeah. cause effect. So they yeah. don't like me, I must be an idiot. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's the perception that they might not like me enough and knowing and even though I know it's got nothing to do with them, and that it's that, the it's that playing out in my mind and that and then where I think I get hesitant is then I, I it, it's almost like I, I'm putting it down that it's work to then have to reframe it or preframe it to go well that's not true Helen that's just you and kind of creating extra energy work in my head to yeah. to discount it so then the possibility of not being life kicks off the self-talk yeah okay. yeah okay and that self-talk is self-critical you called it abuse yeah yeah okay how long does that self-talk then go on for um it depends on the context and well, let's go back to the event in you had that in event um that particular one that just popped up it probably takes a few minutes okay. uh well maybe yeah let's say a couple of minutes and then it and then if I, I can do it and then move forward but then if um other things come up where the voice can kick in. It can, it gets um, a little bit, bit like using a metaphor, um, the stone, hang on, no, um, like a snowball effect rolling down the, the hill. It gets bigger and bigger if the, the more it can pick up and then it, it sort of layers itself um, on top unless like I move away from it and, yeah, really distract myself from it. But it can okay. still be, yeah. So is not putting yourself out there, you distracting yourself from what it is you want? Yeah, it's distracting me. 
it's distracting myself out of fear of of how I might bully myself. Right. Right. So so you're not afraid of their judgment, but yours. Yeah. Okay. So their judgment fires your judgment. Yeah, their their potential judgment. So my okay. my brain picks up something and goes, "Oh, let's." They might be able to judge that, and then I go, "That's not true." And then and then it becomes almost it can become an argument in my head at times, right. and then it's and then I'm I know that that's energy draining at times too to have to continuously talk talk back to myself around that. And your fear of that happening is what's stopping you from putting yourself out there. Yes. Okay. So what's the positive intention? If that was a strategy, if that was, sounds like self-protection to me, if that was a strategy, yeah. what's the positive intention of the strategy? Um, by not putting myself out there, it's to stop myself from going through that cycle. Well, that's part of it. But what's the positive intention of the critical self-talk? Um, it's... It's a safety mechanism to um, ensure the world. Hang on, no, that's not. Um, it's it's a way to view that I view the world to ensure that I'm safe and don't do anything where I, it can be can be criticised or can be yeah I can be um, looked down upon. I guess. Okay, so let me just check in. Let me use your words. So so self abuse by critical self-talk is safe? No. <laughs> it's probably um, it's probably how my ego is trying to perceive it as a safety thing. It's Is it working? It's a, is it, no, is it it's, working? it's a way to keep me, the positive intention is to keep me small so I'm not seen and it's it's that avoid that tall poppy syndrome um, element. Um, let, yeah, me we, just, let me just butt in and stop you. Can you hear that tall poppy syndrome has become enculturated in your self-view, Helen? Yes. Yes, I can. So and it, it's, it's interesting because there's this element of me that wants to, like, really shine and be different and unique and sees itself as unique and different right. to shine, but then this element comes in and, and mm -hmm. stops, prevents me from really stepping out into that. So let's go all the way back to where we started, that the fear isn't putting yourself out there. The fear is putting yourself in here. Yeah. Can you yeah. see that? It's just out there looks like it's the cause. Mm. But actually the cause is the critical self-talk. The positive intention of that critical self-talk is to keep you small because you've got a belief in there that if you go grow beyond whatever level you think you could, then you'll knock yourself down. Uh, yes. You know, and yeah. Stop you from becoming a, a a tall puppy. Yeah, and then and then that plays out in the vision that I can see how much effort it is to deal with it internally. Then if there's a mass of external factors, you know, doing the same thing, the energy to have to deal with that potentially is going to be so much that it's like that's going to take away from the, right. the joy rather than and it, even though from a cognitive perspective I know to that just to ignore it and leave it and like that's their problem and their issue if there is that element and just to go my own way. And I, I'm working on it, definitely a lot better than I was, but it's still I can see it's still there, definitely. Well, yeah, you said working on it, and then you yeah. looked to the up, you looked up to the right hand corner, and you, you, sorry, your left, my right, yeah, and, and you looked at that picture again in your head as you said, "I see it." Yeah. <laughs> so it looks. Where is it? I want you to point to it. Where to, to your left? Point to that where that image is. That movie of you putting yourself out there and then criticizing yourself like you did in that past event. Point to it. Where is it? It's there more so from what I'm feeling, but I'm I think I'm looking that way to avoid it <laughs> to a degree. Okay. If that makes sense, it's like it's like I can. There's something yeah. there, but I want to I want to move that way because I I don't want to look at that. Right. So let me let me just point straight at it 
can you see it's it's out in front of you all of the time yeah yeah and you're looking out there to try and avoid what's in front of you yeah if there's a positive intention where when was that event that you're holding in mind that's in front of you just to the right it's a constructive one. It's a constructive one. Yeah. Can you tell me about it. It's. It's not even. I don't even know how to explain it. It's. It's more of a sense or a feeling, mm. an element. Um. It's just almost like, and it does actually sound like a male voice, but no one in particular. Mm -hmm. um just nitpicking or picking at something um and nothing specific in the image or the the feeling it's just it's it's pulling at something and then me feeling like I need to justify myself and explain myself in the face of the voice in the face of yeah yeah it, um and this isn't what they're saying but as an example Matt might be um oh uh, well, one which I was totally fine with at the time was, you know, you're you're so fat, you should lose weight, kind of thing, and then going, well, that's da da da, or I'm really healthy, or I'm this, and justif justifying my stance when it, I don't shouldn't need to, and the energy involved, and, and that's the sense is feeling the energy involved in having to justify or re-explain myself to yourself. In the face. Yeah, in the face of stuff. And and then, yeah, and to myself is just reframing it, the constant reframing and it become turning it into an argument almost, which I know is myself, yeah. Becoming an argument. Yeah, it's creating an argument. That's the big thing is this. Okay. Just arguing. Let me just catch your language. You said they mm. when you're referencing your construct. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear, and I just really want to point at this, Helen, that they is you. Yes, I've separated them out and I can see that I've, I'm still calling it, I've separated myself out into different right. categories. And right. so I, yeah, I, and I'm having the argument with myself, but right. I see it as, I, I see it as separate. I hear you. Yeah. And therefore, it's in the third person. You have no power over that, do you see? So, yeah. so by placing it in, by placing that part of yourself in the third person, can you see you're disempowering yourself and taking an under-responsible relationship with that part, that part of yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just look at that part. What yeah. does that part want for you, Helen? What's its positive intention? Um, it's basically to stay small and just ride out. What's going to happen if you don't from its perspective? Um... That... It's not so much that there'll be a lot more work to be done, but I can't be, will be under responsible, I guess. I can't be, I can't be as lazy and chilled and laid back and, and not, and, and have to take responsibility. So yeah, it's, it's, I have to take responsibility. For what? For, if I'm an example to others or leading, then um, I have to take more responsibility for how I show up. Okay, and what would that actually mean for you, Helen? If you were to take more responsibility for actually showing up, what would that actually mean for you? Um, in this sense, I'm guessing, no, I'm guessing um, it would be that I need to get work done, do things that I am aiming to do and achieve, um, instead of going, oh, that's okay, I can take several days off and just binge, say, binge your TV series and <laughs> do, do and, and just and switch. Up. I guess it means it means that I, I wouldn't, it feels like I wouldn't have the ability just to choose to switch off for several days and switch off from the world. Oh, 
Yeah. So you'd lose independent choice. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But it's more that take that time out to myself and just and switch off from everywhere else, yeah. Yeah, but that's agency, yeah. right? That's what yeah. I'm referring to when I say independent choice. True. And that is the choice The choice in how you spend your time, therefore your independence, your agency, would be taken yeah. away from you. Yeah. So is this part protecting your agency, hence, hence the male voice? Um, your your capacity, your ability, and your right to choose what you do and how you spend your time. Yeah, and I guess there's because there's an element or been there's been an element not now, um, now but there's been an element of shame around choosing to do that. Then I've been able to do it without having to t say tell anyone or notify people. <laughs> Whereas if I choose it now, people will know that about me and. Yeah, and then it comes back to that judgment and perception. That would know what about you? That I like I I I sit down and I'm taking several days out just to binge watch stuff. Or, okay. Yeah, and so then it, it comes back to that perceived judgment of how that would be showing up as somebody or how I would be perceived. And how yeah. would you be perceived in your view? In that in that part of yours view. In that part of my view, it's lazy. Um, right. Yeah, basically, it's it's lazy and um, I won't use the words that come to mind because we're filming this. Um, but yeah, it's it's it comes back to that self abuse of this is not how how somebody who is successful behaves. Right. You know, they're hard working. They get in. They don't. Right. They work bloody 10, 12 hours or whatever they do. And yeah, even though even though that that. That's not your intention to do yeah. that. Yeah. This part of you is protecting the image. Yeah, it's my image. You should it's, project. Yes, the image of how I should project and show up if I'm going to be this person that has influence over other people potentially. Not over, but okay. has influence in the world. So I'm guessing showing up authentically uh, as a professional businesswoman isn't on your radar? Or this part of you's radar? Um it yeah, it, it's more it doesn't really see the point of having to do it necessarily. It sees it sees the enjoyment I get from coaching, but all the other elements is it's like you don't have to do this, like, so why if I can do it? <laughs> and what would it Sorry. what would it say about you to be judged as being lazy? unprofessional what would that say about you Helen what meaning do you um, to 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 those views um the words entitled come to mind and then it um this came up in another session around this perception of um because I have an ability not to work and I have some wealth that I'm perceived then I, if I'm not working, then I'm perceived as a rich little girl element that, and I've, I've moved away from that because I didn't like the girls I went to school with. Um, right. uh, well, I, I, I didn't like how they showed up in the face compared to when I went to a really low socioeconomic school and the comparison of the people that I was around um, at, at that time. Yeah. Okay. And if you were perceived as an entitled rich little girl by your clients, yeah, let's say let's say that that was true. What meaning do you bring to being seen as a rich entitled little girl? Um, what what would that say about you? Comes back to being lazy. I'm like I'm just lazy, and I'm not not contributing to the world okay and I'm not, I'm not, that true. sorry let's say that was true what would that say about you um it probably just comes to the point of well what's the point then like what what do you what are you here like why are you like it comes back to that why of yeah what's the what's the point of being here if you're not contributing or doing something um to the world and like what was the point of you probably what was the point of you suffering so much as a child 
okay. and, and doing that and going through all of that if you aren't able to provide something and coming into the world that you did just like being able to provide something to the world right it's so a sense of purpose that there is there that I should that there's something that I'm meant to come here for um and then yeah even though there's time to times where you just want to take out time and Sweet watch, off. And yeah. watch, watch a, a binge on a series yeah, and and I think for me, like, and I'm, I've accepted more of being able to just do that um, to a degree. It's just finding that balance of being able to show up how I want to show up, and also then just be like, okay, this is my my time, and I can do what I like. Sure, but you see, what you're doing is you're protecting yourself from being seen as that person. My sense mm -hmm. is to be seen as that person would say you're not a good person because because you know you've wasted all of the years that you've suffered yeah. for nothing. Yeah, and I've wasted, and it's almost like there's this element of you've wasted enough time over the years when I, I was hiding. So it's like, well, it's almost this you need to right. make, up, make up for time and, you know, and not not do that. That wasn't healthy, right. so stop wasting time and, and get on and do things. So let me just check in. This is your becoming a better person tomorrow than you were today than you were yesterday yes is that, is that the, the trajectory of your intention here yes yeah it's to become a better person and be better than than what right. i was right yeah. which presupposes what that i'm not perfectly imperfect as i am right now <laughs> right that you're not good enough somehow yeah can you hear that yeah and that's that's run my whole life that I'm not okay. good enough. So let's just point at it, right? There's a self-belief. Yeah. How long you had that self-belief? Since I was probably six or seven. Okay. So is that the coaching topic, Helen? Yes. Yeah. Is it to free yourself of that self-belief that, finish the sentence? That I'm not good enough. Okay. Yeah. When did you create that? Um, probably, well, I, I, I say from about seven, but it probably evolved over a couple of years over that time when the full realization around the good enough around, and it just comes back to the same thing that my dad chose his other family over, over me oh. and acknowledging me as, as a part of him. And then it just kind of got more and more embedded until he died when I was 19 and he didn't acknowledge me then. And then it really, that probably really reinforced it to an element. Okay. And then I'm going to ask an odd question. What's the connection between your dad, the not being seen and accepted by him and the male voice that you run to run yourself? Um. It's it's that having I mean uh, he was very critical about stuff as well so he was quite a perfectionist um you know if there's a tiny bit of something on the ground it was like pick it up or do this or uh, yeah um and one point he sort of said oh when I was a teenager he said um his youngest daughter had lost her puppy fat by that stage um or something along those lines um which because I was a bigger girl and um so he was quite critical in in that space um of doing and being and then it comes down to having a male father figurey kind of thing which i also seek out okay so then then what i'm hearing is this part of you is looking out for you yeah, mm. to ensure that you don't get seen and perceived as you perceive he perceived you yeah yeah and because I wasn't allowed to be seen as his daughter, um, and that was a very, like, even at his funeral, I was pretending not to be right. his, I had to pretend not to be his daughter. I was just the daughter of a friend of his. And, right. yeah, every time they said our sympathy goes out to his daughters, I knew they weren't talking about me. So, right. yeah. yeah. So this is part of you hiding yourself. Yeah. And hiding that part of you that you sense isn't good enough. Yes, yeah. Because in my eyes, I wasn't good enough for him. Right. And he, 
I didn't get an opportunity to kind of work through that with him um, before he died and, and everything like that. So, yeah. Right. So, so then can you hear what you've taken is you've taken, you've taken your sense of self in the face of him and you've projected it out there. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. That's called an object relation, Helen. Yeah. And so is that what you what you'd really like to shift? Because do you see, I would, if I were you, I wouldn't put myself out there either if I held that frame that I would be perceived as not good enough, like I was perceived not good enough by him. And I put myself out there and now there's a million him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I'm not doing that. Yeah, totally. And I and I've allowed it to be reinforced in like a I think a bit with my last relationship that yeah. it, it came out um, that way, which is where, I, I, in a sense, I kind of opened myself up and then the way it came out was that I wasn't good enough for right. him. And so it just re, re, re reinforced everything right. again. So yeah. when you think about yourself putting yourself out there, you're referencing this relationship with him and going, I'm not going to go through that pain here you know, uh, in, in the face of a million people, like I did in the face of one person and the other people who I had to pretend to. Yeah, yeah. Are you done pretending, Helen? Yes, I am. Very much so. <laughs> Let me just check in because you said, yes, I am. Oh. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm trying to hold my hand still now. <laughs> I am. I'm very much done with it. I really, I'm, I really want to just be able to get out and put myself out there and, and, and not have there. that frame holding like just in the back because it it's it I can feel the weight of it and it's yeah. frustrating like an anchor right yeah so you you like this beautiful magnificent speedboat who's who's gone through the, the greatest engineering trials on the planet yeah and you're ready to go and you're ready to go and you're ready to go out there and race and be the beautiful speedboat that you are, but you've got your anchor stuck <laughs> down in the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so when you're you're afraid of like starting the engines and turning them on and really giving it full power because you sense that that's going to hold you back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to rip the end of the boat off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So is it time to pull the anchor up? Yes, definitely. So from a from a cognitive intention perspective, Helen, uh, your let, let me just reference your identity compass because there's there's a story uh, just in that. So let's have a quick look. So you can see here that first and foremost in your sensory channel of seeing, here's mm -hmm. the image management. Yeah, number one. Here's the managing your sense of self, because when you think of a sense of self, it was primarily visual with some kinesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I've probably worked a bit more on my kinesthetic as well or my hearing, so that's why that's maybe moved down. Well, that's secondary, the secondary because you mentioned and you motioned to a feeling associated with the moving yeah. that you in your head. The, the, next, the next big cognitive intention driver is people. The next big cognitive intention driver is second person perspective. So do you see you're perceiving other people through their perspective? The mm. third big driver is affiliation, wanting to be liked and wanting to be recognized. The fourth biggest is external. Yeah, that, that you're running that external authority caring for others and others view and what they see and perceive in you and then and then their consensus is is the, the, you won't be seen as a good person you won't be seen as part of the group mm -hmm. yeah and so there's that seven-year-old's view second person perspective and so, yeah it's learning to be seen as part of the group but then also feeling like i'm not the part of the group as well yeah well part of the family so we're going right back to the basic core second person do i belong yeah yeah and to put yourself out here now means i might not belong to this pro bigger professional group because you're referencing the family that you never belonged to yeah you can see here that vision is really high so that's the seeing and perceiving so you can see yourself putting yourself out there you reference you know what to do mm. 
and then and then you know that means you won't be seen consensus as a good team player as a good professional so the identity compass do you see those core cognitive biases are driving uh, are driving from the core self belief that i'm not good enough trying to become a better person is actually stopping you from becoming your true potential yes yeah so from a coaching perspective is that what we're looking at shifting on behalf of you releasing the anchor going back to the metaphor on behalf of you leaning into your potential reintegrating that part of you who's looking out for you but simultaneously holding you back so that you can start to run you Helen yes that would be really good <laughs> well thank you for spending some time with us thank you for spending mm -hmm. some time thank you for being so open so generous with your expression of yourself so generously opening up yourself to the public to putting yourself genuinely and authentically out there without trying to, Helen. Yep. Thank you. Hell of a first step. <laughs>